Okay. I'm actually a more aggressive um, investor. So if you want the paper I wrote uh, on aggressive investing, it's called uh, How I Turned Millions in Real Estate into $35 in Cash. So. <laughs> Okay, so um, uh, I thought of coming up here and, and demoing, demoing something after Mark's presentation because he was talking about interfaces. And when you're, when you're writing software, custom applications, often the code you write is um, very specific, right? I mean, that's most of the code you're writing. It's specific to your application. Uh, but sometimes you have to, it, it's, it's valuable to be able to write code that's more generic. And when I'm writing something like dbkit, I have to be very generic um, because I want to reduce the amount of code that you have to write. So, for example, I use interfaces quite a bit, and I wanted to give you an example of that. So, for example, when you, when you drag a, uh, this little guy down here, the table connection, onto your layout, the table connection class needs to be able to interrogate the layout and figure out what's on it so it knows how to address controls. It needs to know which controls are dbkit controls. You might have other controls on here, labels, charts, who knows what, that aren't in any way connected to dbkit. So all of the dbkit controls, let's go to dbkit here. Let's take like the checkbox control. Uh, they all use an interface I've defined. Well, I have two of them. I have one called uh, bindable and one called bindable with data. So bindable with data means that it's going to draw data in and out of the database and bindable means it just needs to know about the control. It's not necessarily dealing with the database. So as a result of that, uh, each of the controls that's bindable has a bind method, right? And this is simply calling, we're now in um, the checkbox control, so we're calling bind control passing it the control itself. And th this is basically how uh, it knows. It, it, because it's part of this interface, the table, the table connection can loop through all the controls on the layout generically. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but the Zojo framework provides a lot of properties and methods that tell you like how many controls are on the layout and things like that. So you can loop through all of them. So I do that and I look to see if this control is part of this interface. If it supports this interface, then I can call the bind method for each control that is part of the interface without really knowing what control it is, right? I just loop through the controls and if it's one of those, for example, if, I, if we look at table, let's see, here's the table connection. Yeah, let's go to methods and where is it? Yeah, bind all controls. So this is looping through all the controls. You can see for each C is desktop UI control and layout.controls. And it's looking to see if it's a dbkit.bindable with data. And if it is, then it can, then it can cast it and, and call the bind method and pass it. It's passing in itself, or it's passing in the table connection. This is a little complicated. Um, it's passing in a, a table connection so that it can bind that control to that table connection. There can be multiple table connection objects on the layout, so it does a little magic to find out which, you know, which one matches the same table, or if it doesn't have any table assigned, then it just picks the first one. But basically, it's just going through, looping through all of the controls to, to um, figure out which ones this particular table connection should be controlling. And it does all of that with interfaces. Um, so for example, on a layout, so in this case, there's just the one table connection and it's assigned, it's gonna manage the customer's table, it's gonna work with the customer's table. And each of these controls, um, you can see our, the super is a dbkit control and I don't need to specify the table because the, the, um, the, def the default, the behavior is that if the table isn't specified, then the default uh, table connection is used. And, and again, all of that works because of interfaces, right? Otherwise, you'd have to write all this really, really specific code, and that would be um, not very fun at all. Um, let's see. So, one of the things I was adding while I was back there is uh, toolbars. 
The toolbars that were, that I, were in the um, program before that you saw earlier were toolbars I had to add manually and I had to write, you'd have to write code to, to tell it, hey, this button in the toolbar, that makes a new record. And that button in the toolbar, that uh, saves a record, that kind of thing. Uh, so now there's a, there's a, a DB kit toolbar and you drag that and drop it onto your layout and it's not going to look any different, but let's see. So this toolbar now is all done automatically, right? There's no code behind it anymore. There, if you look at the current example that you have with Zojo, in this layout there's a bunch of code to set up that toolbar, but now the toolbar's there, it operates, it does everything it needs to do, but if I go to the layout, what you can see is there's just this toolbar and it doesn't have any code at all, right? And in the opening event, there's no code for the toolbar. That's all gone, right? And once again, it's all being done generically. I'm looping through uh, the controls to find the toolbar. I'm looping through all the buttons in the toolbar. Uh, and I'm using classes to represent them. So for example, uh, where's a good one? Here's the, um, the edit toolbar button. All right, so this, this represents the, the edit button in the toolbar. So I'm, I'm generically adding that. And, and the way I've set it up is that if you go to a layout, let's see, you click on the toolbar and you just indicate, I'm using the inspector behavior panel to, to um, present these properties. So you just indicate which buttons you want, right? So if you want a delete button, you, you indicate that, undo button, whichever ones you want, you indicate that and then they just show up, right? So there's a lot of advantage if you want, to, if you, for writing generic code, there's a lot of advantage because then you can make things that can easily work in different projects without you having to write a lot of code every single time. You just drop things in and they work. So the, this is an example of that. Um, so now I have toolbars. Uh, let's see, what else I wanted to show here. Um, So, oh, oh here's, a, here's another part of it. And, and this goes back to something I think Mark said as well. Let me get to, here we are, okay. Let's look, for example, at the methods. You notice that a lot of these methods have more than one signature. That's almost always because I have one for desktop and one for web, right? Because the, um, the this is the, the table connection class and it supports desktop and web, right? So I can literally just copy this class and drop it into a web project and it will work. But I need a different signature because I'm passing in a web view in one and I'm passing a desktop window in the other. Um, oftentimes the code is almost exactly the same. Uh, there'll be little changes like this is web UI control in layout.controls versus the desktop version, you can see it barely changed, right? Is desktop UI and layout.controls. So it's just little tiny changes that have to be made. Um, but I've got this so that despite how big dbkit is, again, from doing code quite generically, let me close some things up here. Okay, despite that, um, I can basically just uh, copy this one class from the desktop version into the web version of the example. All of the rest of the classes are unique uh, to desktop or web. So if I open up the web version, there'll be all, all these same classes will exist on the web. Uh, but because they're subclasses of web controls, they, they can't be in here. This is a desktop project. I did originally want to do that. <laughs> I set that up and Javier and I worked on that a little bit and we thought we had it so I could actually have web controls in here as well so it could just be one set but the, the, the IDE is not really uh, expecting that. It's not expecting to find web controls in a desktop project, surprise, surprise. So, uh, but anyway, uh, so when, I make an, when I'm updating dbkit and I'm doing work in the table connection, I just copy that you know, when I'm done over to the um, web version, but all of these controls look nearly identical to their web counterparts. For example, uh, the search field. So here's the search field, right? And I've 
oh, you remember when I was talking about the AI stuff and we talked about, well, somebody asked, could you uh, ask, ask ChatGPT to refactor code? Well, I, I tried that. I hadn't, hadn't tried it before, but I tried it. And I said, hey, here's a method. I gave it, the, well, I've deleted it now, but I gave it my original search method, which was quite long. And I said, can you refactor this? And it did. It, it broke it out into a bunch of different methods, all very well named, good descriptions, et cetera. The code, though, wasn't great. Um, there were a lot of problems with what it did with the code. And in one place, it actually made a comment and just said, you know, insert code here. Um, so, yeah, so <laughs> that, that wasn't great. But the, the breakout was good. Um, so I used that, uh, having it, uh, you know, one for creating the SQL query, inside SQL query, it, it called where clause to create the where clause. Uh, inside where clause, it called columns to query. So, so that all made a lot of sense. So I, I did break it up. So now it's in, in multiple methods here. But if I go over to the web version and open up dbkit and scroll down, you can see it, it looks nearly the same. I often get confused about which one of I'm in because I'm moving around so fast. But you can see even though this is a web control, it's basically nearly the identical, what I think is identical, yeah, basically the identical, identical set of methods, right? And there's just little differences in there. What? Okay. Anyway, so, so the, two, the two sets are nearly the same, and I can do that because I'm very careful to make all of this code very, very generic. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's, that's basically what I wanted to show. If you, there, there's almost always a way to write generic code if that's what you need. So think about when you're building applications, hey, is this some code I potentially could use in another app and maybe you know, it's worth taking a little bit extra time uh, to genericize it so that you'll be able to use it in other projects. Um, now, having said that, don't make uh, don't make good the or great the enemy of good, right? You know, um, sometimes you just need to get an app working, right? I know in DBKit, for example, there are a lot of places where um, I probably need to go back through and look at the scope of various methods and decide what needs to be private. And there's a few places where uh, I'm using properties, and I really need to be using computed properties. Because I don't, I want you to get the value, but I don't want you setting it. Because <laughs> if you set it, you can screw things up. So there's a couple places I need to go back through and do that. But my goal is always make it work first, and once it's working, then go back and start optimizing for that sort of stuff. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show. Any questions? Yeah, you, when you get a new version of dbkit, you just delete the version that's in your project and drop in the new one, and, and the instances on the layout will still point to the new ones. Now, I'm trying not to make any big, whoa, what happened? Okay, I'm trying not to make any um, big changes. Um, early in the design, I changed things around, and so when I put out a new beta, I'd say, hey, by the way, you'll have to change the following things. Um, for this version, I just added one more icon because I've added a back button to the toolbar because now the toolbar is done automatically. So I, I'll have some instructions that say, hey, grab the back button icon, st stick that in your project. I was just talking to Javier earlier about how I've got a separate folder of icons, right, because they're images. And I really want those to be in the dbkit module, but modules can't hold um, images. Right? And I was like, why? And there's no good reason why we can't do that. So he's going to look into that, because I, I really would prefer you not to have to copy two things. Now, with libraries coming, <laughs> I could just compile dbkit as a library, and that problem goes away, because they would just be part of the library. Um, but still, I think if you want to put an image inside of a, a module, you should be able to do that. But yes, I've, I've, uh, I've copied. I've copied new versions in all the time. You just copy it in and, and it works. Um, I, I really like writing generic stuff. Um, this is a lot of fun for me. 
to, to be able to make it so you can just drag something onto the layout and not write any code and have it just work. Um, you know, maybe configure a little bit in the inspector or something, but other than that, it just works. Um, that, that's exciting for me. So, anything else? Well, okay, so the table connection is the same code. Okay, character for character. I, I literally, I'll work on it in desktop, for example, and then I'll just copy and paste it into the web example. So it's exactly the same. The stuff that isn't the same are the individual controls, and that's because uh, they are subclasses of the real controls. So there isn't really a way to have a, something that's a, well, okay. So in, in C++, you can have something that is a subclass of multiple controls. It's polymorphism, right? Uh, we have interfaces, which is more like Java in Zojo. So uh, it's not likely that you'll ever be able to have a class that has a, that has a parent or two parents, right? You're, these are all single parent households, basically. <laughs> so it, you're not going to have two, yeah. So those have to be kept se secret, uh, separate. So in the web version, I've got the web controls, and in the uh, desktop version, I have the desktop. And yes, the code even between those is nearly identical, but they still have to access the subclasses, right? The properties and things like that. But, you know, like I built the, the um, search control, the search field. I built the search field for desktop first, and then I went to build it for web, and it was really easy. Actually, that's a really good example of one where I did have to make a little bit of a change, because for the desktop, it's all running locally. So, I can have the search happening as you type. But that's not really practical for the web. So the web version uses the pressed event right, instead of text changed. And, and you, know, you type and you hit return and then it does the, the query. So, um, but it's, yeah, it's really not that bad. And there's not that much code in the individual controls. So. Well, yeah, so that just depends on how I distribute it. If I distribute it only as a library, you're right, it would, it would be, you wouldn't have access to the source. But chances are I would distribute this both ways. I'd have a library, if you just don't care about the source, drop the library in. You do want to monkey with the source, be, be my guest and, you know, grab it out of the... But for, for a lot of people, they're not going to get inside there, especially as it gets more mature. I've had some users contact me with questions and... Uh, they've actually, I think I mentioned this the other day, that they actually figured out where the bug was and told me about it, so I fixed it real quick. But other people just want to use the, the code and don't want to mess with it. They're, they're happy to let me do that work. Um, so, yeah. Did you have another question? No, okay. Anybody else? Going, going, gone. Okay, thank you.